What's up guys, Matt here from iTech Teach You 4. On this week's photo tip of the week, we're gonna be going over everything you need to know about aperture. So aperture actually means an opening or a hole, and that's all it is really, is the opening and the size of the hole in your lens. Now there are three things that go along with this that basically explain everything about aperture. The first is that it is the hole, and the wider open equals the more light that comes in. When it comes to letting in more light, you're gonna get a faster shutter speed, which is great for shooting something like sports, so you're not gonna get any movement in your picture. But if you have a lower shutter speed, you're actually gonna get sharper images because it's letting in a smaller focused amount of light. Now the second thing is how you know how much light you're actually gonna be letting in, and this is through f-stops. On a normal kit lens, you'll get with the DSLR, you'll see from a f3.5 to an f5.6. Now that F is the F stop, so it's 3.5 to 5.6, and those regulate how much light is being led into the camera. Now one F stop equals twice as much light as the F stop before that. So if you go from an F4 to an F2.8, that means you're gonna be letting in twice as much light as before. Now if that sounds a little confusing, that might be because this is probably the most confusing part about the aperture, and that is that the numbers go backwards. So the smaller number means you actually have a wider opening, and a bigger number means you have a smaller opening. That's the most confusing thing, in my opinion, about this whole process. Once you get that in your head, it's pretty easy to figure out what your f stop is going to be, and it's really easy to figure out which way you need to go to change your exposure. Now the last thing is depth of field, and this is something that most people want from a DSLR. That's the main reason they think it's such a nice camera. That's the main reason it is a nice camera, is because you get this beautiful depth of field. And basically what that is, is everything is blurry beyond your focus subject. So if you'll see in a lot of nice pictures, which I'll actually show in a second how this actually looks in real life, you'll see that the subject is focused, but everything behind it is out of focus. So that is what a depth of field is. Now a wider aperture, say 2.8, is gonna be a shallow depth of field. Everything is gonna be out of focus except for what you are focused on. And the same goes for the opposite. If you are at f22, that means everything is gonna be in focus because it's such a narrow depth of field. So that's pretty much it for the basics of Aperture. It's really one of those things that once you have the basics down, you don't really need to come back to it anymore. All you have to do is go out and actually use it. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. I'm gonna show you the effects of using your Aperture, specifically when it comes to depth of field, because that's what a lot of people are interested in. But I'm also gonna talk about how that affects the shutter speed. All right, so here I have my camera set up. I'm focused on this tree here, but there's stuff behind it. So you're really gonna see how Aperture has an effect on depth of field. All I'm gonna do is start at f2.8, then I'm gonna take another picture and another picture all the way up until I get to F22, showing you the results along the way. So what you're looking for in these pictures is that as the aperture gets smaller, the background is actually gonna get sharper and sharper. So this is the best example to show you the biggest effect of aperture. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and take a picture. I'm at F2.8 right now, focused in on this tree like I said. So I took a picture there, and you can see that the tree is in focus, but the background is pretty blurry. So now what I'm gonna do is go ahead and move up to F4. Now the shutter speed is going lower because I'm letting less light in, but it is compensating because I'm in shutter priority. So I'll take a picture there. And you can see that background is a little bit uh, more in focus, not in focus at all, but it is more in focus than it was before. So we'll go ahead and move up to, we'll go to F, well, let's go to F8. And there you can see the background again is getting uh, more in focus. And we'll just keep doing this real quick. Let's go to F16. Now you heard there that the shutter speed is actually kind of going slow. That is because it is letting so little light in that the shutter speed has to stay open for so long. So this means you're not gonna be able to handhold this kind of image because there's just not enough light coming in. And if you handhold, it's gonna give you a lot of motion blur. We're gonna be talking about all that stuff in another video and we're gonna wrap all this stuff, how it goes together in a separate video as well. So keep that in mind. Uh, so let's go ahead and we'll go to the last one, which is F22. This is a really tiny hole. So we'll just go ahead and take a picture there. And you heard how long that shutter was open. So you could see that the background, it is not perfectly focused like the tree is, but it is definitely a lot sharper than it is in F2.8. And you can see those compared side by side right now. So anyway, I hope this video helped you understand Aperture a little bit better. It's really not that hard. It's just one of those things that if you don't know, you're not really gonna get the best out of your camera and you're really lacking behind. But once you know it, it's gonna be amazing and you're gonna be able to do a lot more things than you thought you could. And you're really gonna know what your camera is doing as it's doing it. So stay tuned in future episodes, we're gonna be talking about shutter speed and ISO. And then after that, we're gonna wrap it all together, talk about how they all interact with each other in an exposure video. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure you guys give it a thumbs up and subscribe 
subscribe so you can see more content like this, my photo videos, and you can see all my tech stuff if you're interested in that. Like I said, my name is Matt from iTech224 for Photo Tip of the Week, and I'll see you guys in my next video. See ya.